he wanted a traditional blend. And I'm like, absolutely not. I can't. I discovered this thing called Nacho Kids. I was reading all the um, articles, the posts. I said, going through the podcast, and I think this will help us. I think this will help us. It will help us get control of our marriage and our family. You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related. Real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. Welcome to episode 260 of the Nacho Kids Podcast. What's going on, y'all? Hope you made it past the first of the two parenting holidays. (laughs) Mother's Day and Stepmother's Day. (laughs) Yep. Uh, I guess I grouped those together. So then we got Father's Day coming up. Mm -hmm. No Stepfather's Day. Which is fine. Yeah, that's okay. It is okay. All right. Well, today's episode is fairly long. So I am going to share a thing or two, and then we will get to listening. All right. Start sharing. First of all, do not forget that there is the Nacho Kids Academy. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired in your blend, (laughs) do something about it. NachoKidsAcademy.com. Yep. The next thing is we have our first ever guided Nacho Kids Boot Camp Challenge. Mm -hmm. We are accepting applications through tomorrow at nachokids.com slash boot camp. And that's it. That's the cutoff. If you want to be one of the chosen 20 people to join the guided challenge, submit your application today. Applications in on the 25th at midnight. That's right. All right. Our guest today is in a blend. They got married, but they're not living together. And yes, we know that's not abnormal, but they've never lived together. Hmm. It's not like they lived separately because they couldn't get along in the blend. They chose to live separately from the beginning. Interesting. Yes. That's all I'm going to tell you. (laughs) So life is just hunky-dory then, right? Of course. (laughs) You uh, have that sarcastic look on your face. What? Me? (laughs) Yep. All right. Well, since uh, this is a long one, we'll get to listening now. Today we have Takitha. Hey, Takitha, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. So we have you here to share your story. Okay. And you kind of have a unique story. Is it unique? I'm learning in the group that it's it's, it's kind of common. Well, let's just say it's becoming more common. Yeah. So let's talk about before you blended. Okay. Okay. Do you have bio kids? I do. I have one son. And how old is he? He is going to be 16 next week. Wow. 16. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. All right. And so you started dating, I take yeah. it. I met my husband five years ago. Okay. As far as your son, does he go see his dad? No. So let me start from the beginning. I, I guess it's been six years ago. I met my husband in April of 2018. So. Yeah, I think that's six years now. I'm really bad with yeah. math, so forgive me. And when I met him, he was a single father raising a 12-year-old little girl whose mother had died of breast cancer. In, oh, gosh. Yeah, in December of 2017, December 31st. And they were not married. They were not together. So he had to now become a single father because her mom had passed. And so I was just like, wow, you know, dad, you're sending me this, this, this man who's raising a 12-year-old daughter. She was very clingy to her father, so there were a lot of issues in the beginning, um, but a lot of it I attributed it to trauma and grief and the thought of losing another parent, as any 12-year-old may may go through. It was just, it was concerning. And so our kids are 18 months apart, so she was 12. My son was almost 11, Mm -hmm. so we started dating. We took a break, and my son lost his dad, my ex-husband, the day after he turned 12. Oh. So now we were on a level playing field. Both of us had had children who had lost their biological parents at the age of 12. So it was 
a different road for us to get to where we got. And so we dated off and on for about three years before he proposed. But the blending process was not something that I think either one of us wanted to do without it causing unnecessary trauma to our children by living in the same household. Right. Because his daughter has a son from her, 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 uh, my husband has one son who is like 17 years older than her. So she had a 29 year old brother, obviously didn't live with him. And then she had two brothers by her mother who had um, children who were also in their thirties. So she was raised as an only child and my son is an only child. So it was kind of hard to imagine that blend. But even when we blend somewhat, because we still, we just have two residences, but our kids still live and go to school in two different areas. Yeah, that's the part I wanted to get to. Yeah. All right. So you met this guy. Mm-hmm. And he was raising his daughter because her mom died. Yeah. Then your son's father died. Yes. And y'all felt like y'all were in a good spot. Because we you're not having to deal with exes. Correct. Who are both high conflict. Right. Was your husband and his ex still together when she died? No, they were not. Okay. And what about you and your ex when he died? No, my ex-husband and I were divorced. He had remarried. Okay. So both of you are in this dating pool and you meet each other. And you're probably like I am where you're thinking, oh, good. It's somebody that has a kid. So they'll understand. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. And you mentioned that his daughter was really clingy, which we completely understand why. Correct. Yeah. Y'all both have your kids full time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you decided to get married. Mm-hmm. When y'all decided to get married, did y'all agree at that point to not live together? Yes, we did. Because at that point, we, you know, I explained to my husband, I said, listen, my son is in an incredible school. He prayed for the school. He got into the lottery. To- excellent public school. And I said, I'm not changing his school. That's just not something I'm willing to do. My son also has um, autism, so he does not say change well. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to do that. And I said, and my advice is honestly, do not disrupt your daughter's education at this point, because I think that it will cause more problems in our home that I'm just not prepared to deal with at this point in my life. You know, I I think that we have to look at it from their point of view because, you know, we are getting married, but it is a disruption in some ways to them. And let's let's look at that. And he agreed. I mean, my stepdaughter graduates next year in 2025. So we'll combine residences at that point. Okay. Now, I have to ask this. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you just wait to get married? It was funny because we had done this song and dance for years. So uh, he and I had broken up like three times, you know, in the course of our dating. And when he came back, it was like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to wait to get married. I love you. I want to get married. Let's do this. And I was like, okay. And people thought it was odd that we were doing it (laughs) because we're Black. (laughs) I say that to say that, you know, most Black people feel like, oh, you get married, you need to live together. So it was odd for our family to have us make this joint decision. Um, Honey, that's you, white people too. Oh, really? See, I yeah. didn't know. I didn't know. I was like, black people like, why are you getting married and living separately? But um, yeah. it, tu- it turned out for the best because my father-in-law attended our wedding in June of last year and he died in August. Oh. So he got to be at our wedding. That's a blessing. Yeah. So it, when we thought about it and some of the issues that came after getting married, thinking about that he was able to attend our wedding two months you know, later, he passed. It was like, okay, we made the right decision. Right. So while y'all are dating, mm-hmm. how close do you live with from each other? An hour and 15 minutes. Ooh. Yeah. But, you know, I live in a high traffic area. So it's a, you know, the Washington, D.C. area, which encompasses like Washington, D.C., suburbs of Maryland and suburbs of Virginia, mm-hmm. is very congested with traffic. So an hour commute to work, like I live 18 miles from my job in the city of D.C., and it takes me an hour and 15 minutes to get here because Girl. of traffic. Yeah. So can you imagine? So highway miles are better than traffic. Yeah. So let me ask you this. When y'all were dating, I guess you would see each other mainly on the weekends? 
and we would get together for dinner during the week. So we okay. would drive to like 45 minutes away and just meet for dinner. With the kids? Without, if it was a school night. Okay. Because that was too disruptive for them. With the kids, definitely on the weekend. But during the right. week, like, no, it's too disruptive. Let them do homework and, you know, make sure they have dinner and we can have some adult time. And that's a good idea. Yeah. So how was your relationship with your stepdaughter before y'all got married? Before we got married, it was different. So I was very hands off. One of the things I said to my husband is that he had a lot of um, comments about how I raised my son. And and I I used to say to him all the time, um, you know, one of the things that I noticed is that Black men tend to have a lot of comments about Black women who are single moms to Black boys. I said, and you may be raising your daughters and your daughters are one step from working the pole at a strip club and you don't (laughs) even know. That's what I said. I said, (laughs) but I said, and I say this to say, you say a lot of comments about my son, but you don't even see the things that your daughter sees. I said, now, however, I will explain it this way. I think that you are observant because you are a man. So you see the things that, you know, my son should be doing into manhood and so you're trying to correct the things that may you you may be observing. I said, but I also see those things in your daughter as a woman. I said, and I try to stay in my lane and allow you to parent as you choose. And he's like, no, no, no. Especially after we got engaged, you need to correct the behavior. We're blending this family. This this is you know we're one family. We need to do this. So, you know, he would ask my advice and my opinion. And a lot of things I agreed with her. I realized that with both of them. One, my husband is an amazing man, but he is a communication suck. It is absolutely (laughs) horrible. It is horrible. I can't even explain it. And because of that, he's raising (laughs) a daughter with poor communication. So they're like two ships crashing into each other, just bumping heads. (laughs) And so I became sort of an outside, like, let me get this straight. Let me see what I see. And I get it. And a lot of concerns that she had about her dad are just parenting decisions. And I said to her, I said, I'm going to tell you what I told my son. If you're gracious enough and lucky and blessed enough to be able to parent somebody someday, you're going to realize that you don't know what you're doing. You're going to try, but you're absolutely going to make mistakes. And you just hope that your kids will give you grace and forgiveness, just like we're giving you with raising you. Yeah. So, you know, it was really a lot of stuff about them. He would ask my opinion. I would get my opinion. But it was great. She she was trying to connect with me. I could Mm -hmm. see her connect. It wasn't, you know, she wasn't as clingy to her dad. She realized um, that I was a good human being. I was a good mom. And she saw the things I did for my son. And so she was like, started to let her guard down. So Mm -hmm. we we needed to develop a relationship and, and try to get closer. Because where her dad was weak with like party planning and things like that, I was strong. So, right. you know, I give my son huge birthday parties and she's like, wow, you know, I, I want stuff like this. But her dad had never done that for her. Mm-hmm. And so she saw value in me coming into their life. Right. And how was his relationship with your son in the beginning before y'all got married? In the beginning, it was amazing. He, my husband is such a like friendly kid person, meaning the kids automatically love him. They just, oh, he's such a great person. And they see that. Whereas I'm a lot more reserved. He's very like outgoing and funny. And my son instantly liked him. And, you know, which was great. You know, I, I felt comforted as a mom that, mm-hmm. okay, he, you know, he, he immediately liked him. So in the beginning, it was amazing. And so y'all were like, okay, this is good. Yeah. I've got a, we've got a good relationship. The kids have a good relationship with the respect of others. How did the kids get along? In the beginning, it was horrible. <laughs> they did not get along. And a lot of it was because they were, you know, used to sort of being the only children and wanting their way. And right. it was a lot of, I want it this way. We're not going to share. We don't have to share. So we had to remind them we are on the same team. We know you guys are spoiled individually, but there's <laughs> enough love to go around collectively. Stop making it only about you. Everybody, right. you know, have a voice. And so it was a lot in the beginning. I mean, we were on vacation in Florida a couple of years ago. And 
you know, the kids were sharing a room, they had their own room, and then we were in the room next to them, the connecting room, and my son and stepdaughter got into such an argument. My son called her a B. And I had never heard my son use that kind of language. I was devastated. I'm like, I don't curse at you. Where did you hear that language? And it was, it was absolutely horrific. And so that, those parenting challenges were heartbreaking. My husband was a lot more forgiving towards my son than I was because as his mom, I was, I felt like it was a reflection of me. I had failed him. And so right. And you're thinking, oh no, little boy, we don't talk yeah, like that. We don't talk. Because if you can use this language with her, you could definitely try to use it with me. And that's not acceptable. Right. Because I will knock your teeth down your throat. Correct. I gave birth to you. I'm going to tell you, my mama told me I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was hard because up to that point, I had practiced, you know, gentle parenting. So I was just like, but I never expected this from my son. But we then just tried to figure out, like, what are we going to do? It was hard. It was like, how are we going to maintain a relationship when our kids are just not getting along? What mm-hmm. is, and then I just had to take a step back and I had to forgive my son, but I also had to tell him that this is not acceptable. And I think you're angry. I think part of your grief is overwhelming you because you didn't want to do therapy after losing your dad. Therapy is no longer your choice. It is a requirement now. You need a right. safe place and where you can heal so you won't become an angry man, you know, because I'm trying to help you be a whole individual. Right. And so we got in a therapy to help him. And then my husband put his daughter in therapy to try to help her navigate some of her emotions. And and she wasn't like violent or, or rude towards my son. It was more so that she has a really slick mouth. And it was it bordered line on disrespectful to mm-hmm. my son and even to us. And part of it, yes, is growing teenage behavior, but it's also unacceptable when you need to find a better way to communicate your needs. Right. So we put them both in therapy. I am really glad that y'all did that. Yeah. We had no choice. It was like, we need to get our kids out. And when I was growing up, therapy was, oh, something's wrong with them. They're crazy. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, yeah. that's changing. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think the pandemic changed a lot of people about that. Yes. And I tell you what, I actually met with an attorney. And we were talking about therapy or something for some reason. And he said, you know, I was at a a conference with other attorneys. He said, and they started talking about therapy. He said, they all have a therapist. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm thinking, why do y'all have a therapist? And then he said he thought about it. And he's like, I need a therapist. Yeah. And so the stigma that's attached with going to therapy is definitely going away. And I'm so glad. So things are going good, except for the kids not getting along. Yeah. And y'all, y'all decide to get married. Yeah. But it wasn't just, besides the kids, my son had an issue on that same vacation. My son got mad at my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time. He got mad at him because, you know, my son was just being very bitter and angry. And so my husband, very, it takes a lot for him to say something. But he was very angry and he said, you need to stop acting out. I know you're sad that your dad died, but you are going to kill yourself and have a heart attack like your dad if you can't get control of your anger. Now, that affected a child, a 13-year-old boy, you know what I'm saying? And I don't think my husband, he wasn't intentional, but I don't think he realized what he said and the impact. So then at that point, you know, about six weeks later, my husband and I just broke up. You know, and I explained to my son, hey, we're no longer together. So I just want you to know, so when you don't see him around or don't see us all hanging out, you know, I don't want you to question, you know, why in some kind of way. Um, And he said, but why did y'all break up? I said, well, you know, sometimes adults don't get it right. And we care for each other and love each other. I said, it was nothing you guys did, but it's more about us. And, you know, we're just not there yet. And so my son is like, okay. But he never told me how bad. My husband making that comment felt to him. So, you know, me and my husband break up for a year. Then my husband like, comes back and he's like, this is when he comes back. He's like, yeah, I made a mistake. I love you. I cannot do this without you. I want to marry you. I need you to know this. And so my husband then tells my best friend, I don't like him. And so my, and my best friend was like, what? Why? He was like, did I tell you why I hate him? She was like, what do you mean you hate? Hate such a strong word. What's going on, nephew? And so he said, he mentioned the comment that my husband 
been had made about him having a heart attack and dying like his dad because he's so angry. And so my best friend told my husband what was going on. She said, you know, he has very strong concerns and um, issues about it. You definitely need to talk to him and make sure he's okay. And so he talked to him. He asked him, could he take him out to dinner so they could talk? And he said, my son was like, no, my mom is cooking for me that night. Or <laughs> me and my mom are going to the movie. He said, well, can I come over and take you for dessert? I, I'd like us to have a conversation to clear the air. And he says, okay. And he lets him go. And I, I find out after the fact, but whatever it was between them, which was I found out later was the comment, they squashed it. And it it helped their relationship move forward. Good. Which then allowed him to go ahead and propose to me because, you know, he didn't want my son feeling any kind of way. Mm-hmm. And then we he proposed and we got married eight months later. Okay. So you get married. Uh-huh. Your son's okay with him. Yes. Y'all are still living separately. Yes. How did things change with his daughter towards you? So for whatever reason, she just seemed to become disrespectful to me. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, we had a, a, a beautiful wedding. It was like 65 people. Very small, elegant wedding. She was my maid of honor. My son walked me down the aisle. And his other son was his best man. So it was really about our kids and our family. And she just became disrespectful to me. Um, she would hang up the phone on me, like answer her dad's phone and then hang up on me. And I don't know. What is, you know, I'm sort of not used to this, but I don't know what's going on. And, you know, I would talk to him and I'm like, you know, we went through premarital counseling. We know we're supposed to put each other first. What is going on? And I said, I'm really concerned about her behavior. And he would have multiple conversations with her. We would talk to her. She was just very kind of dismissive and didn't say anything to us, you know, wouldn't be direct about what was going on with her. And I'm like, well, my son seems to be okay now that we're married. What did we miss? What has changed? Right. But it, 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 she just was just being nasty for no reason. And there were things I hadn't done for her, to her, or for her. And I mean, even her mouth, I was like, yeah, I'm not accepting this. And it was causing a strain on our marriage. I mean, and at this point, we had been married two months, and I was ready for a divorce. I was oh, like, wow. I'm not doing this. I don't, I cannot do this. And um, I was just like, I will not do this. And so the woman who married us is a licensed clinical therapist. You know, she has a doctorate, she's done family therapy, but she tries to treat adults only. But as a favor to me, she was like, you know, when I did your premarital counseling, I will do family counseling for you guys. No. And I'm like, I can't, like, I I don't want him to choose between me and his daughter, but I'm not going to live with a child being disrespectful to me. Like, it's just not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and during that time, that's when I discovered Macho. It it was just like, I got to find something because I am losing my mind. I cannot. And, um. So she did therapy with us. She did family therapy. And what I realized is that my stepdaughter had a lot of issues with her dad and the past women that he brought around her. So when I dated and divorced my ex-husband over 10 years ago, my son only met two people in in my entire dating life, which was my ex-boyfriend and my husband now. So he never met anybody. I never had him around anybody because I didn't want my son to get attached. Well, my husband would have other women around his door. And so for whatever reason, she she just felt like, I'm going to leave too. I'm not going to be around. He's going to, you know, we would break up and make up. And she felt like, okay, she's not going to be around. But this came out in therapy. She never told us this. And the therapist was excellent with pushing her to own her stuff. So what I realized with a lot of therapists is they will not really have the child own the emotion. And at this point, you're a teenager. Let's start putting real words around your emotion. She said, but what did your stepmom do to you? Has she ever been mean to you? And she sat there crying. And she said, no. She said, so what makes you think it's acceptable to treat an adult like that? I know your father did not raise you like that. And she held her to the fire, the feet to the fire of, we're going to own your emotion. We're going to talk about what's hurting you, but you don't get to treat an adult like this. Your behavior is a reflection of your father and honestly, your mom. And you know, your mom would not want that. Yeah. And so, you know, through therapy, we were able to heal the wounds. And she, you know, and 
my stepdaughter, you know, to her grace, it um, came to me later when my husband was out um, at the store and apologized and was crying to me for her behavior. And I hugged her and I forgave her. And I'm like, you know, I love you and I'm sorry. But she also said things to me like, you know, I'm not very emotional towards her or loving. She sees me loving on my son, but not her. So I had to take a step back and accountability about how she, what she needed. And I didn't know right. what she needed because I'm always like, I don't want to touch people unless they tell me it's okay. Yeah. And so I had to learn that. But in this, you know, in the therapist brought up natural parenting because, you know, my husband had a hard time because he wanted a traditional blend. And I'm like, absolutely not. I can't. I discovered this thing called Nacho Kids. I was reading all the um, articles, the posts. I said, going through the podcast, and I think this will help us. I think this will help us. It will help us get control of our marriage and our family. And she started researching it, what I told her, and she brought it up with the both of us, not the children um, as, as a unit, but us. And she said, I think you should explore that. I think it will relieve a lot of the stress and frustrations you're both having but definitely not allowing your kids to break your new marriage and your new covenant that you guys just take, you, you just took. Right. So kind of how I fell into the nacho world. Well, I'm glad you found the nacho world. And I'm really glad that your therapist listened to you and looked into it. Yes. She was like, I have to protect my mental peace. I said, I can't do this. I said, I don't, I love this man. I said, I took a vow before God my family, my friends. And I said, and he is my person. But he's yeah. sure only going to be here for a few more years before they're out of our hair. So how can we work it out? And, you know, my husband was so against it. He's like, black people don't do that. <laughs> I was like, really? I said, you know what? Marriage is writing your own rules. Yes. That's what it is. It's writing your own rules. Why can't we do it? You know? Right. And, I, and, and so it was just like the only thing I had is that my boundary is I don't allow anyone in my home that is disrespectful. You cannot be in my home and disrespect me. And that is the boundary that I have for everyone. I explain that boundary to my stepdaughter and my husband. And I Mm -hmm. said, you're ever disrespectful in my home. This is my home. I said, you will get out. I don't care what time it is. I said, and you and your dad can have a great conversation when he drives you back home since you don't have a license. But that is my rule. (laughs) My boundary about being disrespectful. Now, if you're upset with me or angry, every right to come talk to me and say, hey, can I talk to you? It really rubbed me the wrong way when you did X, Y, and Z. I said, but well, we have to learn how to communicate because we are going to, you're about to go to college. You can't, you don't get to treat me like dirt and treat everybody else great. That's not acceptable. I said, because mm-hmm. I, nobody will ever love you more than your parents. I was trying to tell children that, you know, no matter what you may believe, the reality is that most people who have children, really, truly love their children. And nobody's ever going to love you more than them because they'll put up with a lot more stuff than anybody else will. Right. Yes. I can understand you not wanting to take your son out of school and him not wanting to take his daughter out of her school. So it makes sense to me that y'all didn't move in together right now. Yeah. And a lot of people that choose to live separately they've actually lived together and they can't do it because the kids they don't get along everybody's unhappy so they stay married but live apart Mm -hmm. your situation is different y'all chose to do that in the beginning and for different reasons Mm -hmm. it's what's best for everybody yes now when stepdaughter graduates if she's still in the house and doesn't go off to college or something like that are y'all still going to move in together Yes. And she is going to go to college. Yes. She's, <laughs> she's, she's going, going, girl. She, yeah. Well, she was, she's excited. She wants to be a doctor. So, you oh, know, that wow. was one of the things that we loved about meeting each other is that both of our kids are very, very smart. Mm-hmm. Academically, you know, she has a 4.5. My son is in school enrollment, 4.0 in college, and a 4.25 in high school. So they're both very intelligent children. Mm-hmm. And so college is just a definite. And it was like, understand that when this just happens, there'll be a new set of rules because now we'll be combining households. Right. But there are still still things though, Lori, you know, because when you're a child and even when coming and blending and stuff and the things that she does, you know what I'm saying? Or that my son does. Like I just had to get new furniture. 
mm-hmm. because my couch was broken. My son broke my couch and he didn't do it on purpose, but he broke it. And I had a warranty on it. And so I had to go get new furniture. But um, so I ended up having to buy a whole new living room set because my couch was discontinued. So it's fine. Mm-hmm. But my son, you know, so like I have things like, okay, well, we're not going to eat in the living room anymore. We're going to eat at the table. No chips, no nothing, no drinks in the living room. Right. We're not going to be sleeping on the sofa. You know, there's room. You can sleep in a room, but the sofa is not for sleeping. It's for sitting. It's for sitting. <laughs> exactly. Yes. They, it has, it's a problem for a lot of teenagers. And my husband is like, oh, you're being too protective. Oh, they're just things. So I'm like, babe, it's not just things. It's something that's new. Can we have it new for a minute? But he has yeah. a different perspective on it. And so, you know, which is the two kids. Because when my son goes, my son will sometimes fall asleep on the couch. He would prefer the couch. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. he's like, I think you're overreacting. And so we're trying to balance it out. But, um, you know, she has this thing where she does not like her feet to touch the shower floor. Like mm-hmm. the top floor. If she likes the mat. I don't do mats because mats could like charm. So I don't do yeah. a mat. Personal preference. It's too much effort to clean the mat. I have to be buying a new mat every week. So she had like uh, had a situation where she had, you know, got a towel, a new towel and washcloth, and she bled on the towel and washcloth. And instead of trying to clean it because she was on her cycle, she started her cycle early. It was like, oh, I'm going to throw these away. And I'm like, okay, so let's have a real conversation about your monthly menstrual cycle. And so it was an opportunity for us to connect. I said, don't use my washcloth on the tub floor. We're going to get you some shower shoes, which are just the flops. You're going to need them when you go to college because you don't know, you know, unless you have your own bathroom, you definitely want to make sure that you don't get, you know, what is it, fungus on your feet because yeah. you know, you're walking around barefoot. I said, so I'm going to respect that you do that. I said, but you have to understand, you need to wash out towels and stuff like that. You don't just mm-hmm. leave them there with blood on them and then we throw them away as that costs money. So she was receptive to it. She understood, but it was it was still a difficult conversation. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want her to ever feel like she's a visitor. Right. And yes. you walk that balance. And one of the best things that I can tell y'all is before y'all move in together, is any changes that are going to happen when y'all live together need to happen in the home now. Mm-hmm. That way it's not, oh, we have to do this because she moved in or we have to do this because he moved in. It's setting the new rules prior to moving in together so the other person is not blamed for them. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. And we definitely need to try that. You know, it's like you guys, you know, because she said, well, when I graduate and go to college, I'm never coming back. I said, oh, okay. So you won't be back for Christmases or summer, you know, Thanksgiving, <laughs> holidays, summer. You're know, just going to live wherever you are. Well, I guess I never thought about that. I need you to think about that. Because if you don't need a room, we won't get your room. But if you, you know, you need room, then understand that you will. And so she was like, yeah, I think for both of us, it, it's still a hard time, right? Trying to have the kids pick up behind themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's messy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With teenagers. Mm-hmm. It's like you cook it, clean up behind it, put it in a dishwasher, do this, do that. So we're both struggling with their uh, cleaning habit. Right. Yes. And that's why you need to instill that stuff now Mm -hmm. rather than moving in together and her blaming you for everything or vice versa. Yeah. When we moved in together, David had treated the house like it was a gymnasium. So the couch girl, I understand 100%. I don't even want you plopping on my couch. That's how my son took the last one. So you get it. <laughs> don't plop. I get it. Well, my mom worked in a furniture store for years. And so you were to sit on a couch. You didn't lay on it. And you'd never sit on the edge of the bed either. Because mm-hmm. so that's not how they're made. Correct. So, you know, I guess she kind of rubbed that into us. And so I had this couch that I bought years ago before I even knew David. And before Jackson was even born. And I love my couch. It was like my pride and joy before my baby, right? Mm -hmm. And so we had to tell them they couldn't just plop on the couch. You can't jump on the couch anymore. Yeah. So, of course, we didn't do it beforehand. And now it's, oh, Lori took all the fun out of the house. Yeah. But we did get them their own couch. 
and they could do whatever they wanted to on that couch. And that's a good point. Maybe get some of their own couch. You can go in the basement, that's your couch. Right. Exactly. And I get what your husband's saying he's, because it comes across as he's not, I don't want to say that you're materialistic because that's not the phrase I'm looking for, but you're yeah. trying to take care of your things that you paid good money for. Correct. And he's looking at it as it's not a big deal. Correct. Your children, it'll be fine. Right. And you're thinking, no, I want this couch to last like 10, 15 years. Correct. Just, just yeah. let it last. More than, more than a weekend. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> You're overreacting, but I mean, I told the children, I was like, listen, I have a long memory. So if either one of you don't do as requested, you know, this goes for both of you. I'd love you dearly. But when you get your stuff, I'm going to go over to your house and I'm going to plop and do everything I told you not to do here. And you're going to be <laughs> mad because you paid, but it's okay. You're going to remember the conversation. And they looked at me like I was crazy. It's funny you say that because I threatened to do that with David's oldest. I'm like, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to throw cars on the floor and put chips in their floor like their kid that did ours. And <laughs> it was of course, I couldn't do it. You know, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try, Lori. I really am. I am going to try. And it may be once they be, make us grandparents someday in the future. That yeah. I pay them back. <laughs> now you can see what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But get muddy feet and walk in and. Don't yep. take your shoes off and go get stuff out of the refrigerator and leave, leave the door the open. Yep. And, yep, and leave it on the counter and leave a swig of juice in the container. <laughs> yep, all of those things that stress me out. Yep. So how often do you and your husband see each other now? Every week. Every week. This week, we're not, unfortunately, going to see each other. So my husband just left. Was it Monday morning? He just left my house Monday morning. This week is my stepdaughter's junior prom on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also my son's birthday party. So my husband can't be at the birthday party. And I can't be there to see her junior prom. It's junior prom. That's why I did not. Because everybody was like, why don't you have your son move his birthday party? Because my son's birthday is on Tuesday next week. And they were like, why right. don't you have a move the following week? Because he picked that day. And this is junior prom. This is not senior prom. If it was senior prom, I would have asked him, since it wasn't on his actual birthday, can we move the party? I said, but he'd already picked that day. And so, and I didn't find out about her prom until after he picked that day. So right. And if you made day, him switch, then that's going to cause more animosity between those two. Yes. And so we have asked the kids to both give us grace because we explained to them, we're going to try our best to keep life as normal for you as possible, but we're, you're going to miss some things. You're not going to be able to go to something on the weekend because we're going to, you know, he's going to my house or I'm going to his house. It is the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. But you have to give us grace, you know, because we're going to try our best. But at the same time, we're going to fail. But I won't be there to see her get uh, ready. But she is actually, the good thing is, is that on May 11th, she's going to the prom here in, in my state with one of my girlfriends. Her son is a senior and he didn't have a date. So they asked, oh. like, hey, so we're doing like an arranged prom date. Um, and so the kids got to meet each other for the first time this past weekend. And so she's going to prom with him on May 11th. So I will be here and helping her to get ready to make sure she looks absolutely gorgeous for the second time. Right. And you can get pictures of the first time. Yes, absolutely. So her, she's there with her dad. But, you know, my stepdaughter is really good. She, you know, she has learned to have a dad and still kind of, Lean into her femininity because her dad, there's a lot of things her dad doesn't know. <laughs> you know she's just like, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. So she's going to get herself ready. Like, I offered to pay for a makeup artist, and she's like, No, I like doing my own makeup. You know, I always feel like they make me look a lot older. Okay, whatever you want to do. Right. Yeah. Well, earlier you mentioned that stepdaughter had a lot of issues with her dad because of the women before you. And a lot of times it's easy for us to forget that you marrying dad is a reminder that her mom's never coming back. Even mm -hmm. though she knows mentally that she's never coming back, it's just, it concretes things. It does. And I think I was hurt though, Lori, because I didn't know that he had all these women around his daughter. Because again, I keep men away from my son and I'm just like, well, who does that? So I think right. women. If you don't ask those questions and how many women did you introduce your kids to, 
your kids and you're walking into a battlefield of resolved emotions. They may have like sex girlfriend. And dad was like, oh, it's over. We're not talking to her no more. And the kids feel like that person is taken from them. So they're uh, like, yeah. like you and you didn't even do anything. Yeah. Just like she lost her mom. She lost yeah. somebody else. Yeah. I yeah. keep losing people. You keep telling, oh, we're, we're not talking to them no more. You know, and you're like, okay. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, that, that was hard for me to hear. And so he had to apologize. He did apologize to her for that. And he said, it was my fault. You know, I thought I was doing a good thing by giving you women role models, but, you know, I didn't realize how it was affecting you. Right. And, I, and he apologized to her. And in family therapy, like I said, if we had not done that, he probably, she probably would have never shared that. Right. I and never, my son may have met people I went out with, but it was never anything more than this is mommy's friend. Yeah. And there was no touching, no kissing, nothing like that. David right. was the first guy that I actually dated for a long time that I let Jackson meet. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and I so didn't, you, you didn't want yeah, to, I didn't. Well, Jackson's dad had several girlfriends Mm-hmm. And so he was constantly meeting somebody new. And I just felt like that wasn't what I wanted to do. So mm-hmm. if I went out with somebody more than once and say they happened to come by one day when I had Jackson, it'd be like, oh, this is so-and-so. And there was no different in that person versus my female friend that came over. Yeah. And so when that person also disappeared, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Because he wasn't used to them being there. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. My husband was the first person who, you know, when I met him, he was like, you know, six weeks after meeting, he was like, listen, we're both single parents. He says, I think we should let our kids meet. He said, because, you know, I don't want to go deeper with you. And then our kids hate each other and they hate us being together. And I was just like, do you know, I'll let my son only met my ex-boyfriend once. After nine months of us dating, and then mm-hmm. he didn't meet him again until we were in a relationship. You know, I keep my son, but he's like, no, I get it. I get it. So it, it, we ended up doing that. And so we did that within six weeks. And I think also, as he said for him, it was an opportunity to see how I mothered my son. Yes. And yes. how I was with him. And he said, but I also think men are also looking for a mom for their kids, regardless. They may act like they're not. I think they are looking for a mom for their kids. You're right. You're, and right. you, you're pushing us into a role where your child's like, I, I have a mom. Exactly. I don't want a mom. Even your stepdaughter that her mom's passed yeah. away, she has a mom. She has a mom, absolutely. Right. And, and I, I do it all the time. I, I know which, when I was dating, I wasn't looking for a father for Jackson, but I was looking for someone that would be a good role model. Correct. A good father figure. Somebody you yes. can learn from and and I agree because I think that, you know, I've done enough research to know that my son will never know how to love a woman unless he sees a man loving his mom. Yep. Because that's who he's, because he's going to, because he loves his mom. He's a mama's boy. So when he sees me smile at things my husband does for me, that is what is, is what he's going to want to do when he grows up and, and meets the kind of woman that I hope we uh, will like when he marries. But I knew that and I knew that that's what he would see. But he, when we got married, he naturally started calling my husband Pop. Really? So let, me, let me tell you. So let me tell you. When my ex-husband got married, his dad's father, we had a, a okay relationship until he got with his wife prior to his death, and he was married two years before she before he died. But um, it was such a high conflict situation. I mean, multiple court battles, whatever. So she had my son calling her diva mom. <laughs> and that was really hard for me because I'm like, first of all, I had to go through IVF because you couldn't get me pregnant. So I went through all of those injections and emotions and you're going to take that mom title. Now, if my son had decided he wanted to call her mom, I would have accepted that when his own mm-hmm. was. I'm never going to tell a child who feels comfortable enough, but you're saying, oh, call her diva mom. I'm like, what little boy is calling a woman diva mom? Like, it's just that yeah. little eight-year-olds run around and say, oh, diva mom. Yeah. So I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. But I did say to my son when I got married to my husband, I was like, you are not going to call him Mr. Omar. So find a name that you feel comfortable with in a way that you want to express your relationship. Mm-hmm. And so he decided, I'm going to call him Pop. And I was like, I like 
I was like, so when you grow up and get married, have you know, we get grandchildren. Your grandchildren can call him Pop Pop. I love that. I think that's it. So, and he just he does that now. My stepdaughter, no, she don't call me anything. She was calling me by my first name, and mm-hmm. so even in the group, I can see I'm not alone. But I'm also like, I mean, I'm not your equal. You know, I said, you know, we're not on the same level. I don't have any children calling me by my first name, including my son's friends who I've known for years. Mm-hmm. Call me, you know, such and such as mom. Right. You know, that that's how children are. And so, you know, at family therapy, the therapist suggested, why don't you just call her stepmom? Right. Why don't you call her stepmom? But if you're not walking around calling other adults by their first names, it is disrespectful. And so yeah. she, she doesn't call me anything. Even to this day. Hey, you. <laughs> no, she doesn't say, you just start talking to me. She'll walk into a room and just start talking to me. Or she'll move up closely and hold my hand and then start talking to me. That is so funny. To let me know I'm talking to you. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to let you know I'm talking to you. But it's so it's hilarious. And I'm just like, okay. But my son calls my husband pops. And I, I mean, I like that. Do I wish you would call me something sometimes? But I figure that when we really started trying to not show that it's going to develop naturally, I feel like a weight has been lifted, you know, because all of my close friends knew about the disrespect and her, her mouth. And I was just like, and I'm like, I'm ready for a divorce. Like you've been married 60 days. I know. And I can't do it more. Yeah. But when we, I started really researching Nacho, I said, this is what's best. So I backed off. I'm going to develop a relationship with her without me trying to parent her. I'm my husband's partner. And that is what we, we, you know, vow, you know, that we come first. So by mm-hmm. being, I'm going to love and support you and however you need me to support, but I'm not going to parent her unless she's doing something that is unsafe. I'm going to supply her needs. You know what I'm saying? I'm going mm-hmm. to be there for her, but I am not going to parent her. Now, if you ask my opinion, I will give it to her. If she asks for my opinion, I will give it to her. But I realized I was offering my opinion on parenting. And it was upsetting her and causing dissension in our home. Yes. So if I step back and just really look at her as like, you know what? I love you. I want the best for you. And unless my opinion's asked, shut up. Because I have a tendency to offer my opinion without it being asked. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I, it yep. was getting me in trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I mean, you had the best of intentions when you did it. I did. But again, you're not mom. I'm not. And she, she did not want to hear it from me. Right. And, I, and a lot of times you're a reminder that mom's gone. Correct. And I think yeah. that with her just seeing that. And so even with me talking to her, when people would refer to me as her mom, I would um, talk to her the first time, a few times it happened, I talked to her afterwards. I said, well, you know, they keep calling me your mom. And I feel weird. Not because I don't want to be your mom. I don't want you to think that. I know I'm your stepmom, which is a legal title, but I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to replace your mom. So do you want me to correct them? How do you want me to handle it? And she's like, it's fine. Yeah. I was like, really? She said, yeah. Whereas my son told me that when his dad remarried, that it bothered him that people would refer to his stepmom as his mom. Yes. He said it bothered him. He would always correct them and say, she's my stepmom. And, and it mm-hmm. could have been different because I was still alive and living. You know what I'm saying? And I'm right. an active parent where she, her mom is deceased and it's okay for her now. It's accepted. But I, ne- I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable. Right. Like I was trying to exclude her. So in developing, you know, as a trusted advisor and, and being a friend and a support, I am helping her to feel like we can get along. You know, she she comes to me for things. Right. A lot of people will say, oh, well, when somebody refers to you as their mom, you shouldn't correct them. But a lot of times the kids are thinking, she's not my mom. Exactly. And it makes them mad. People realize that. It does. Right. And so with my stepkids, they've always called me Lori or the nicknames that they come up with. And it never bothered me. But we would go somewhere and... They have dark hair like I do, so they automatically think I'm mom. And people will say, oh, your mom, da 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 And so before the stepkids could go, she's not my mom, I would say, I'm their stepmom. And just kind of cut it off. And I think when you force it and you force that blend, you start getting rebellion. 
Yes. You get you get rebellious. And not just from the kids. And I think a lot of us want to blame, you know, oh, it's because the, the other parent is high conflict or this or that. But sometimes it's the kids, they're hurting. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to be disloyal to the other parent. And right. the mom. You know, my mom is still leaving, you know, living and breathing. Don't exclude my mom. Right. And yes. so they're caught in a crossfire. Um, but yeah, it was possible. I was like, no, it's my third daughter. I love her. She's mine. Yeah. <laughs> but, yep. you know, I, I want to make it known that I'm not discounting the woman who gave birth to her and who loved her up until her death, that she mattered. And I'm just thankful that God allowed her to come into my life and that I can love her. Has it been easy? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, right. uh, but I And do you that, love her exactly like you love your son? Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. I love her differently. And that's okay. Yeah. And I tell people, yeah. I think that's what I hear. And I, I always push back when I have conversations with uh, blended families, especially those that are black. You do not love them like your own. You do not. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, they will try to fight me. I'm like, no, you don't. I'm like, she doesn't love me like she loves her mother. She loves her mom. Yeah. She doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that I'm not loved. Or that she right. Me. It's loving differently, and that's okay. Yes. That's okay. But if yep. she needed a blood transfusion or a kidney and I absolutely does not match, I'd give it to her. I'm not going to let the child pass because I have two kidneys and she needs one. Right. You exactly. But, <laughs> but it doesn't mean I love her just like I love myself. I don't. And she does not love me just like her mom. Exactly. And and that's how it's supposed to be because you're not her mom and she's not your kid. Correct. Correct. I know we had talked to our kids one time and said, how would you feel if we loved the stepbrothers the same as our own kid? Like I asked Jackson, I said, how would you feel if I loved the brothers as much as I loved you or exactly the same I loved you? He's like, that's just wrong. He's like, <laughs> I, grew, I grew in your belly. Yeah. Th- there's a difference. We've got a different bond. And so David asked his kids, and they were like, nah, man, that would be crappy. Yeah. You're our dad. So a lot of times these people are all convinced that, oh, for societal purposes, I need to say I love them exactly like my own. And the kids are going, well, what, how, how do you love them the same as me? And it's just yeah. a different kind of love. And, but they're afraid to say that it's a different kind of love. They are afraid to say it out loud. Yeah. And you can have a different kind of love for each of your own bio kids. Correct. And that's what my mom told me years ago when I felt like, because I'm the oldest of three. So I felt like my mother didn't love me as much as she loved the other two. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, when you have more than one child, she said, you you love them all the same when you first give birth. But as each child grows and navigates the life, your love shifts. You love them in the way they let you and need you. And she said, so you were very independent. I'm going to do it on my own. Once I leave here, I'm never coming back. Mm-hmm. So I loved you from afar. I gave you yeah. your space. You wanted it. Didn't mean I didn't love you. If you needed me, I'm here for you. But mm-hmm. I'm going to let you live your life. The other two needed me more. And not in a way that wasn't, but they allowed me to come in. They needed me more. You kind of, pushed away. I'm going to do my own thing. And I was just like, wow, I guess I never really thought about that. Yeah. I guess I did do that. And she said, so it didn't mean I love, she said, I love you, but I, I was like, I never heard it growing up. And she said, I never heard it growing up. And my grandmother yeah. said it. And so, you know, that was something we do with our kids. We say, I love you. Good night. And, you know, I'm thankful for you. You know, I always tell them, you know, you, you know, we're proud of you. Just mm-hmm. look at me you, because you woke up this morning, and even though life may be going crappy for you, because you may be dealing with stuff, you woke up and you gave it your best shot. Yep. We're thankful. You came home today. That's a good thing. Yeah. Well, I could talk to you forever, but mm-hmm. our listeners are probably like, come on now, wrap it up. <laughs> so what's one piece of advice that you would give somebody that has a child and is getting into a relationship with someone that also has a child? I would say stay in your lane. And by staying in your lane, it's not a bad thing. It's just saying that I am an addition to this relationship. I am not replacing the parent. And yes. staying in my lane looks like me loving and being safe for this. But I don't need to go all over, all overboard. They have a parent mm-hmm. and they may have another parent. 
They, but they have family. They have friends. I am an addition. I am not going to replace anybody. And I'm going to stay in my lane and love on my partner and be an addition. Right. You know, because I think as women, we just jump all in. I want to be mom. Yep. I'm going to be mom. I'm going to be this. And it's not to even replace them. Because I don't think we're doing it with malice. We just want to mm-hmm. show the kids we love you and we got you. But it comes off as too much. And then yes. I see a lot of people just liking it. Well, you you were doing it. And then you get resentful when you try to pull away. But if we stay in our lanes from the beginning, I think that that would ease a lot of attention, ease a lot of pain and, and frustration when you actually blend. I 100% allows, agree. It allows you to just love and stay from a place of where you are in a role that's comfortable. So you don't necessarily need to heal after the fact. Right. You stop, you stop yourself now. Yeah. And by staying in your lane, you can focus on your kid. Yes. You absolutely can. You yeah. absolutely can. You you can celebrate birthdays, you know, you hang out, but I'm going to stay in my lane and parent the child that I have, that I gave birth to. I'm not going to not love on this kid, but the kid has parents. Right. And I'm going to be supportive to my partner. Correct. And making sure you communicate that. So staying in your lane and communicating that to your partner. Right. You got to communicate it up front because then you find out if, you know, if they're looking for a mom for their kids. Like you said, uh, in the post, in the group you do, uh, when your partner asked you to marry him, did they ask, they, uh, I'm looking for a mother when they go? Yeah. Because yeah. If they are, then <laughs> you set the red flag. But Yeah, instead kind of, of will you marry me, it's will you be a mother for my kids? Yes. <laughs> and if they were asking that, then you need to hey. But if they didn't ask that, have that conversation up front. Yeah. I'm going to be a partner for you, but I'm going to love and and and, and um, focus on the kid that I gave birth to or that I'm ready okay. Right. And I think a lot of men don't even realize it because it's that gender role Mm -hmm. of the women take care of the kids. They cook, they clean, they run errands, they play secretary, all this stuff. And so a man may not even realize that he has that mentality. Mm -hmm. Unless you have that conversation beforehand. He may not. You know, what are your idea of gender roles in a relationship is the expectation is that I become mom and do everything and you stop. Yes. You know, yes. but I, I still, even though we nacho and, and my husband nacho is my son and, and because my son had an issue at school and I was dealing with it. I confided in my husband. He was my support, but he did, he nacho the situation. And yeah. he said to me that it's, it's kind of hard in the beginning to understand it. He said, but I think it's, it's good. I think it works for us. Yes. You know, because he doesn't have any resentment. My son loves him. My son confides in him. They have such a great relationship because he is not trying to parent him. Right. And if for some reason your son went crazy one day and decided he wanted to get up in your face and scream at you, your husband would step in. Absolutely. Yes. He absolutely. Yep. And I think it came to him, like I said, you know, even though it like last time when we entered family council, my son said to me, how come pops, you know, um, it's hard on me, harder on me than he is his own daughter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, I said, baby, I, I don't think he's intentionally trying to do it. I think his perception of manhood and what it takes to be a man, he sees things in you that he's trying to correct to help you get there. I said, right. but for you, it feels like he's trying to, he's too hard on you. That's fair. Yeah. Fact. I said, and you have every right to tell him that. And so when he told him that, you know, it was a an aha moment for my husband and he wasn't right. trying to, he's not trying to bully him or anything but when I suggested Nacho because both of the kids you know were feeling some kind of way he understood that and their relationship is amazing like I I just love that yeah I love that yeah and even he's seeing the difference with me and uh, my stepdaughter he sees that I'm not forcing him. I'm like tell me what you need but I did tell her I am very I'm not quick to hug children especially because I believe in body autonomy. So if you need a hug, just help me. I'll hug you. Yeah. But some kids don't like it. Right. So I, so I would definitely say stay in your lane. And, and if you stay in your lane, it, it just helps it. And, and, and it start does. exploring stuff in the beginning with, with Nacho. I love this concept. I think we all wish that we could be a big blended family, but that is not reality for us. We no, got to take not. individual personalities into consideration. And any past trauma that they've been through. Yeah. 
Yep. And, you know, when we tell people you're not a nuclear family, so many people get offended. Why are you getting offended? It's reality. Correct. Correct. It's I'm, I don't try to convince my dog he's a cat. Correct. <laughs> It's, it's reality. You are not the birth parent of this child. I'm not saying you can't love them. I love my stepkids. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying that they have a mom and they have a dad. And I'm not either. Yeah. And we don't want to hear that. Yes. Yep. And, you know, a lot of the whole nacho method is a lot of self-development. It is. and That's I think- what makes it so hard. <laughs> yeah, it does. But, you know, I see it in some of the groups. I see some of the people who really try to help you focus on developing your own self. and Stop trying to force everything. Yeah. And I, and I see that. And when you recognize that, it's like, oh, wow, I'm causing my own stress. It's accountability. Yeah. It, I'm causing my own stress. Yeah. I'm telling you, when I was sitting in the car that day and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm creating my own misery. Yeah. Like, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? <laughs> They got your kids, and that's what I tell everybody when people are like, well, I mean, how did y'all get better? I said, oh, we got your parent, each other's child. They're like, what? What is that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, it's this great concept. They have a whole academy. I started telling people about it. They're like, what? You know what I'm They were like, that just sounds so out there. That sounds like some white people stuff. It was created <laughs> by white people, but black people do it. It makes sense. I'm, Girl, I'm a mix of everything. Did you hear about us trying to blend? And blending doesn't always work. Yes. That's right. I said it is a sanity saver, so I love it. Yes. Girl, I'm telling you, it was for me, and it still is. Because there's things that happen with the stepkids, or even outside of the blended family, that I'm like, you know, nah, I'm not getting involved in that. It's not my responsibility. I am not letting this steal my joy. Correct. And I am such a happier person. Yeah. And you yep. have to be able to do that. Yep. I learned to nacho my own niece. She drove me crazy. She caused me stress. And one day I said, I'm done. Yeah. And that's I'm done. Did you see it? Yep. You can nacho anybody. You can. And you can nacho Walmart too. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being a guest. I really appreciate you sharing your story. And enlightening us on another situation where somebody might choose to not move in together after they get married. Yeah. And I'm glad that y'all are going to prepare to adjust the kids and everything before you do move in together. Yes. But these are going to be some of the things we're focusing on. We're going to start doing them here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely go over your house rules and consequences and, See what you agree on and what you don't, and don't push the other one to agree to something they don't agree with. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. Like, yeah, because it won't be enforced, and then you'll yeah. get mad. <laughs> if you really, truly don't believe in it, you know, then okay, we won't do it, but what will be the alternative? What will you do? So if I right. always, it's just washed every single night, and you say absolutely not, then are you going to wash them? Right. Yep. And something else we have to remember is like our OCD is our OCD to deal with. Correct. We have to own it. Right. And be okay with cleaning it if that's how you feel. Exactly. Because it doesn't bother your husband and it doesn't bother the kids. You're the one with the issue with it. Yep. So either you can hire a cleaner or you can do it yourself because nobody else cares about it. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's not worth fighting with your stepkids over and ruining relationships, or even getting divorced. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, girl, we're going to have to have you back. All right, so y'all were moving in together next year? Next year, after she graduates, yes. But she'll be going to college. Okay, the end of next year, I want you back. Okay, December 2025. Yep, we're going to write that down. December 25, bring her back. Absolutely, I'd love to. That way we can see how things are going. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Takitha. I appreciate her sharing her story with us. And I do find it interesting that they chose to live separately from the beginning. But they mm-hmm. do have plans to move in together later. Cool. Yep. Then there'll be a whole other set of challenges. That's right. But that's all the 
fun of the journey is which challenge coming up next? <laughs> yes. And there is something that David and I want to share with you. It's kind of funny, something that happened to us this past week. But since this one's a long one, we'll wait till next time. What? I got to yep. wait? You got to wait. Uh, all right, folks. Well, I guess that means you'll have to join us next week. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll see if she can remember <laughs> what she was going to say next week. Probably not. <laughs> All right, well, folks. Uh, thanks for listening. Be sure to share this out. Be sure to leave us a review. All those things that we love. That way it can help others find us. That's right. It's doing your part to help other blended families. Yes. All right, folks. Remember, life is good. When you nacho. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.